What's the best camera for creating food videos? Let's get into it. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, food photographer, video creator. Welcome to my studio. This is part two in a nine part series on the foundations of creating professional videos. So buckle up. Whether you're a food photographer who wants to add video to your list of skills or a content creator looking to take things up a level, this mini course covers all of the essential concepts you need for building your knowledge. This also serves as the introductory unit for my food in motion course, which is a comprehensive experience for food photographers who want to learn to create captivating videos. So I've got more details about that link down below. So let's talk gear. Absolute must-haves. Not the nice-to-haves or stuff on your wish list, but the absolute must-haves if you're going to create videos. And bear in mind, I have a studio full of all sorts of fun stuff, but I've been creating videos for a lot of years. My gear and business did not start out this way. So whether you're creating for yourself or your clients, you can start just like I did with a few important basics. So in this video, we're going to talk about the most essential of all the essential, the camera. And for the purposes of this course, we're going to focus on DSLR or mirrorless cameras. If you're going to be shooting with a phone, well, that is definitely a different mini course altogether, which you can find details about that link down below. So if you are a DSLR or mirrorless user or your phone user looking to get a DSLR or mirrorless camera for your video work, there are tons of great cameras out there that can do the job because there is no such thing as a perfect camera. But there is one feature that I consider to be a minimum requirement. And then there's a few that are nice to have. So first, let's talk about the minimums. There's really just one. <laughs> of course, it needs to be able to capture video, which most DSLR mirrorless cameras may within the last 10 years can do, but make sure to look for its ability to capture in full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080 at minimum. Like we talked about in the previous lesson, if you go to the camera on the manufacturer or retailer's website and look under resolution, it should have at least a 1920 by 1080p, then you're great. Because you can absolutely make great quality videos with that, I promise. Now you might be saying, but wait, don't I need 4K? Well, hang in there. I'll tell you why that's not necessarily imperative. But before we do that, let's talk budget because there are tons of features that are nice to have, but none of them are going to matter if you end up going broke because you overspent on a camera. So I want you to really get real with yourself because do you already have a camera with video capabilities that shoots 1920 by 1080p resolution? If you do, start with that, especially if you're just getting started because you don't know what features are going to be most important to you yet. I want you to learn the basics and get started with what you have. And then as you grow your video skills, you're going to discover the limitations of the camera that you have, and that's going to better inform the choices you make when you buy your next camera. So save your money, learn first, buy later. Or if you have set aside budget and you want to get something with video specifically in mind, then take a moment right now and be honest with yourself. What do you actually want to spend? Less than $500, less than $1,000, less than $2,000. Everyone's budget's going to be unique. And so what would be a number that would be reasonable for you to invest in this? Now, a question I love to ask myself at this stage, which is really hard, <laughs> but particularly if this is something you're excited to learn, but you're not entirely sure you're going to stick with long term yet, is asking myself, what would I be willing to spend if I knew a year from now I lost interest in this? That's a tough question, but it's a good question. Now, also keep in mind that refurbished cameras from quality retailers are an outstanding way to keep in line with your budget. I have bought tons of quality bodies from B&H used gear department over the years. I actually shot my entire book, Picture Perfect Food, on a used Nikon DSLR camera. Now, my only suggestion is to make sure that you are buying, if you're buying used, to buy from a quality retailer who can provide a good warranty and return policy in case there's any issues. You might not get so lucky if you go with some rando on eBay. And so please promise me, you're gonna stick to your budget, okay? And so now with that budget number in mind, let's talk about the nice to haves. So the very first thing is 4K. Like I said, it's not essential though, because the vast majority of videos that we're publishing, particularly online, are 1080p. Like on Instagram and TikTok, you can see that they recommend 
posting 1080p resolution for the best quality on there. Now, YouTube does support 4K, but most people are not actually viewing the videos in 4K because they don't have a 4K monitor. Because that's the thing to keep in mind, the viewing experience is based not on what the video is captured in, but what it's being displayed on. So if you have a 4K video, but a 1080p screen, you're gonna be seeing that video in 1080p. And also thinking about the purpose of the video, would you gain more from this video series had I shot it in 4K versus having shot it in 1080p? For the most part, by sharing videos in 4K, you're not enhancing the experience for most people. And 90% of the clients that I capture video for want the final video delivered in 1080p. So now that I've told you that, then why would you need 4K? Well, here's where it comes in handy, especially if you're shooting one video that you wanna use across multiple different platforms because of the ability to crop and post while maintaining HD resolution. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. So let's say you have a video that you wanna share on YouTube. That's a horizontal orientation in the 16 to nine aspect ratio. But then you want clips of that video to share on TikTok and Reels. That's vertical, nine by 16 aspect ratio. Inside of our editing software, you can crop a video just like you do with photos. So if the footage you have is 1920 by 1080 and you crop it vertically to an aspect ratio of nine by 16, you're then cutting off the edges. Just like if you took a piece of paper and cut its edges, it's physically a smaller piece of paper. So that footage is now all so smaller, you're chopping off a bunch of pixels on both sides. So what started as a 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution video is now 608 by 1080, landing at resolution wise somewhere between 480 SD and 720p HD quality. <laughs> Not the best. Now, is that terrible? No. Again, goes back to the purpose of your video. But let's run the math again, but this time with 4K footage. If you shot the horizontal version in 4K, that's 3840 by 2160. And if you crop that to 9 to 16 for your vertical video, that ends up being 1215 by 2160 pixels. That's still plenty enough pixels left, even after the crop, to export that vertical version of the video in full HD, 19 20 by 1080p quality. And in a similar way, you can crop in on 4K footage and editing and still have plenty of pixels in your final video for 1080p resolution. So all that to say, if multi-purposing videos is a priority to you, 4K might be helpful to have. So the next in line for our nice to have is a variety of frame rate options. We talked in the last video about how frame rate impacts the look of your videos. And so for most folks having 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, I would say is essential. But like you saw in the last video, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second do offer some really cool options for slow-mo and creativity. So if you look up a camera for its video specs, we can see that it offers 4K at 23.98, 25 frames per second, 1080p at 23.98, 25, 20, like all these numbers. Oh my goodness. We also see those 720 for 25, 29, 50, 59 frames per second. Now, just as context, some of those numbers like 23.98, that's roughly 24, and 59.94, that's roughly 60. And for our purposes, you can round up. Now, real quick, I know we just covered resolution and frame rate, but do you have a rough sense of what those numbers and letters that I just rattled off all meant? Hopefully you did, and hopefully that feels really empowering. I oddly get a thrill reading over a spec sheet and going, ah, I know what those things mean. But now notice what's interesting on this camera, like all cameras, is that the frame rate options can be limited at different resolutions. Like at 4K, you only have the option of 24 frames per second on this camera, but you have a wider array of options of frame rates at 1080p and 720p. And this is something to really be aware of because a little story time here, one of my very first video clients, a large ice cream brand, the agency I was working with, I was delivering clips to them and they were then gonna edit the videos for the client. And they had told me in the brief that they wanted the footage at 60 frames per second if possible. They said it wasn't high priority, but if it was possible, they would love that. I said, no problem at all. My camera does 60 frames per second. Well, what I didn't realize is that the camera I was shooting with at the time, the 60 frames per second option was only available for shooting in 720p, not full HD. And I didn't realize this. I wasn't paying attention. I sent over the footage and they came back and said, 
do you have higher resolution footage? We need at least 1080p. And so that's how I discovered this limitation and ultimately why then I reshot the entire video then at 30 frames per second to get that minimum resolution of 1080p for their needs. All that to say, it's important to know that just because a camera says it can shoot 4K and 120 frames per second doesn't mean it can do both things at the same time. So you want to dig into the specs just to understand the capabilities. Now, the one thing that I do keep in mind with these higher frame rate capabilities is that that means the camera is going to be more and more expensive. So do not forget your budget. You don't need 60 frames per second but it can be nice to have. Now, if you find yourself debating on whether to go with a camera with a higher resolution or higher frame rate capabilities, I would personally choose the higher frame rate, assuming that you're at least able to shoot 1080p on this camera, because ultimately a higher frame rate is gonna give me more creative options in terms of the look of the video. But again, if multi-purpose is the name of the game for you, then go for the higher resolution. Now, when we're talking about cameras, one thing that a lot of folks like to bring up is autofocus capabilities. And here's why I personally don't get as worked up about autofocus because most modern DSLR and mirrorless cameras have good enough autofocus for filming food. Our work is on a smaller scale. It's calculated. It's planned for the most part. And like you'll see in my setup to come, it really helps to work from a tripod, which gives you a lot of control. Now I can see why wedding videographers, anyone filming sports, other people oriented content where people are moving, things are changing rapidly, then I would depend more on a super speedy autofocus. But for food, it's just not as imperative. The DSLR cameras that I used when I first started making videos back in 2015 were not top of the line, not highly ranked for their autofocus capabilities, certainly not in comparison to what today's cameras can do, but they were speedy enough for food. And so that said, if you are filming people and more specifically filming yourself, like I film myself, one thing I do love is face or eye detection autofocus. So when this feature is turned on, the camera locks onto either faces or onto eyes. And and so if I move forward, and if I move backward, or I move around the frame, <laughs> the focus is gonna follow me. And again, this is not imperative because I filmed YouTube videos, filmed myself and other subjects for years without this feature. There are plenty of workarounds, but it can make filming your videos easier if this is something you're doing regularly. Now, the only other thing I wanna touch on related to cameras and camera choices is the brands. And I'm here to say that they are all great, I promise. I have filmed professional videos on Nikon, K Canon, Sony cameras, and they all do the job just great. You really cannot go wrong with any of these brands. Because I do remember what it's like, though, to be looking at the internet's worth of cameras out there trying to narrow things down from hundreds, maybe thousands of camera options out there. I do have recommendations for some different options from different brands at different price points all down below. So hopefully that list will give you a solid jumping off point for doing your research. And then another recommendation on those lines I love to make is to consult your favorite camera retailer. And if possible, go into a camera shop and hold the different cameras. See what they feel like in your hands. Or if you can rent a camera from places like lensrentals.com so you can try out a particular camera before committing to purchase it. Now, of course, if you need any help, you have any questions, feel free to join us for free over in the Bite Shot community link down below. But next up, we're on to part three of our series where we're going to talk more about gear, specifically essential accessories.